Hey everyone, welcome to Saturday Night Popcorn. This is Jason. And this is Kai, and we have another great discussion for you today. Uh, the movie of the day is Hard Eight, Paul Thomas Anderson's first film from 1996. Just want to give everyone a heads up, even though it's from 1996, a little older. Uh, I want to give everyone a spoiler warning. Yeah, Paul Thomas Anderson with Hard Eight. Uh, what What's the movie that first comes to mind when you, uh, when you think about Paul Thomas Anderson? Buggy Nights. Boogie Nights? Yeah. Mine is There Will Be Blood. Because you like, love that movie. I love that movie. Yeah. <laughs> that, and like, that's where I got kind of like caught up in like the rating towards the end, uh, end of this discussion. But mm-hmm. like, I was like reading off like all the movies. like uh, Because I don't know. I feel like Paul Thomas Anderson, he he's done a lot of great movies. But I think mm-hmm. he's, I feel like he's very forgettable. Like, yeah. There's none that he gets like. lost. Yeah, exactly. There's none that like stand out. Like if you think of even Patty Jenkins, Tarantino, Scorsese, like you can think of you movies say their that names really stick like, out. Yeah, yeah, you can like rattle off every movie that they exactly. did and everything. And, and Paul Thomas Anderson, where it's like, like, can you imagine being the director that directs Daniel Day Lewis's final movie? Where and a lot of people are like very like. 50 50 on it that they really either really enjoyed the movie or they mm-hmm. hated it and but daniel day lewis to be like all right this is my last movie yeah and and then like you're sitting there as a director you're like yeah. i don't know like i i would get like <laughs> like goosebumps and like like nervous from it i guess but like, did i get enough footage of them this is it yeah <laughs> yeah did i pull enough out of them <laughs> exactly like i know he's method but uh he yeah might not have been method enough right here <laughs> but we can't go back <laughs> but uh but what, what what's what's the the first thing like stands out from this movie for you uh philip seymour hoffman he reminded me of jack black <laughs> <laughs> i know when i saw him i was like man that sucks that he's dead and uh but that's cool i like that and it's just similar with Tarantino, Wes Anderson, like they keep a group of actors and actresses that they utilize in all of their films. So it's cool that he had Philip in this one, and then he had him in multiple other films, and then yeah. he brought his son in for Licorice Pizza. I like that. Oh, that is that's his son. Mm-hmm. The the main the main kid. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah because I ate, like I was like <laughs> I was going through like Philip Seymour Hoffman shows mm-hmm. up here and yeah. then and then you see like a, like a year like a couple years later he makes the master which he stars yeah. in and so it's like that that's cool that like if you think about that like 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 everyone like responds to like adam sandler like has like his group his of group people. like um, look at how many movies he made with drew barrymore and, <laughs> and jennifer it's, aniston now and jennifer aniston yeah, yeah. so it's like that's cool that like it he finds this group of individuals that it's like no matter what it's like it's nice that like you have comfort where it's like hey i yeah. can just tell you one thing and probably like you're just gonna do it <laughs> or it's just a text like hey i got a new film coming out like i need you right like you know was anderson probably just text bill murray hey i need you for this next film it's like all right yeah cool, I'll be there. right tell me what days and i'll be there yeah but man that's cool i didn't know that actually i, mm-hmm. I still gotta watch licorice pizza there's still a lot like I like Paul like Paul's filmography like I've seen like eight percent of his filmography. Yeah, I've seen Heart Eight. I've seen he didn't do Inherit Vice, did he? Yeah, he did. Okay, I watched that one, which I actually really enjoyed. I started The Master, but never finished it, and I still haven't seen There Will Be Blood. I've seen There Will Be Blood for sure. Uh, Heart I Eight. Know and <laughs> that's like the movie i tell everyone i watched it by myself when it came out on netflix like at, at my my parents house and stuff and I goodness was like, i was like i was like laying in bed i was like this is like a movie <laughs> <laughs> but i like that he's one of those old school directors that's like no it has to be shot on film yeah, it's funny because like it, now you're gonna make me think like like look back on like these movies and it's like all right like now you can kind of put your nose up to the ones that like shoot on uh, on digital and stuff like like we we have the like oppenheimer coming out soon and like yeah like true film 70 like, millimeter 
Yeah, I like max. actual stuff going through the going through the camera. So does he do all of his movies? Is that like his thing that he does all of his movies on film? I think I saw I could be completely wrong. I could just be blowing smoke up your ass, but I could have swore he was one of the <clears throat> one of the director directors that still utilize film. I don't know. You do you think that that will ever go away? That like digital... I hope not. Like yeah. I hope there's still like I like the balance. I like having the ability to go to the movie theater and seeing like something that's fully digital, and then also being able to see something that's on film because you can see the differences, but there's still nuances in both that really help the film give it a certain look. Yeah, yeah. I it you never know in the future someone may say like oh I made this camera that's digital and it can still capture the texture of like a film camera yeah. and like that may go down the route but i don't know they, you still no matter what you're going to have directors that are going to make the decision like i'm just going to do it on film like, mm-hmm. that's their decision unless kodak decides to go out of business and everything <laughs> fingers know. crossed no that's a, i that's think open christopher up. nolan's <laughs> keeping them afloat <laughs> yeah there's a good amount of directors that still like nah kodak <laughs> we still need you around well fuji like not to go on a tangent but Fuji was getting rid of a lot of their film stocks uh, like two years ago. They just discontinued them. And it seemed like it was just progressively like, oh, we're discontinuing this one, discontinuing this one, which pushed a lot of people over to uh, Kodak film. Mm. Yeah. Well, I guess no matter what, like you're going to have to make the decision, yeah. Mm-hmm. But Kodak has yeah. the market on lock. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but, uh, like... It, other than the the film, I'm gonna look at this film a little bit differently in terms of like, uh, I wanted the streaming service, like streaming the movie. Mm-hmm. Does that like diminish the film kind of like look? Because like when you like go to the movie theater, yeah, like you're assuming you're like looking at it on a projector. The actual film is it's going, going through, through, the through the projector, so you actually mm-hmm. see it in the 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 kind of the mind of the director but when you see it on on a a disc or even now with streaming that probably diminishes a lot right my yeah my guess would be yes um and then even just changing the formats because you're going from like a projector on a huge screen to hey i'm going to my my home tv and they vary in size so not everybody's really seeing seeing the film the same way. Yeah, now you have like just different technology in the TVs yeah. and everything, and but yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't enjoy the movie. Uh, me too. There was a lot of there was a lot of dialogue, but not a lot of dialogue, which I don't know if that really makes sense, but it seemed like. When there was dialogue, they extend. It was like a full conversation between mm-hmm. those two characters, or however many characters. But then, in moments where they were transitioning somewhere, it seemed like there was very minimal dialogue, which I enjoyed. It seemed like the times where there was a lot of dialogue, there was too much. But I like that they had a balance of here's a whole bunch of dialogue, and then here's some moments of just silence, and you're watching as things progress from I, scene I think to scene, that... or location to location. I think that matches uh who's the the main character's name uh sydney uh mm-hmm. i think that matches his like demeanor where that's true like patty patty kind of like responded to me where it's like he's very like he may seem like he's very abrupt the way he mm-hmm. says things but he's like i, I kind of wrote down in a, in a note to myself that he's like he would he's like the true definition of like genuine whether or not mm-hmm. he's telling telling you something bad or good he's telling you exactly what he's thinking and yeah. and he's like i guess you can kind of say that he's like a man of like like little words, little words. like he only needs to say what he needs to say yeah where john c Riley's character is like just adding talking. in just talking and you even see it with samuel jackson's character where it's like he adds in like too much stuff sometimes mm-hmm. where it's like and i think that's like that dynamic where it's like the the film mirrors the main character where he's yeah. a very solitude person and but he's someone that people reach out to for help to get and things that's done where, 
Yeah, and that's where he needs, <laughs> where, like, that's where, like, the dialogue picks up because it's, like, he needs that information, but it's, like, more so it's, like, just tell me what I need to know and yeah. nothing more. <laughs> and I think that's one of the reasons why I resonated with Sid because, like, working in the field I work in, you need to, you need information as concise as possible so you can mm-hmm. just get whatever situation done. So I like that Sid was that type of person, like, just tell me the issue. I'll figure it out. I'll get it done. I'll help you out where I can. <clears throat> it's funny because like, yeah, the, the, the field I work in, it's like, yes, you need more concise things, but the the tangents that individuals will pay, put you on will kind of like give you a little bit more of the story mm. as you, maybe you didn't, you, you probably thought you're like, oh, I didn't know this question would lead down that route. But you're you're thankful it did because you found out something different. It's like where it's like yours is like I need to know exactly because yeah. it's like <laughs> stuff Tell me go what wrong. the issue is. So I can get it <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I really enjoyed his character. It's like mm-hmm. his character, Sydney's character, um, because it's like he he does embody his voice is like amazing. And, yeah. and it's like, you, you almost forget his voice in terms of like, because like he's, he's passed away now and stuff, but um, it's like, th- this guy's in pretty much everything that you like, that you can remember. It's like, it's crazy that he's like, he's either, he's either a small character. Like I remember him, he's in Seinfeld and he's like this, like uh, <laughs> this like librarian police and everything. <laughs> and so he's like that very like direct, like voice, voice in that, in that show. But then, like, then he shows up in this, and he's like a main character. I've never actually mm-hmm. seen him like as the main character. Actually, I, I, that's you, interesting yeah. to me to think about. Like, he's, I didn't think about that either. Actually, yeah, like I've seen him in a good amount of things, but never as like the the star on the front of the poster. Yeah, right. I yeah, loved. I was... uh... No, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. I, I loved the transition or I love how everything played out between him and Samuel L. Jackson, like how he was first introduced to like the whole John C. Riley's character and uh, Samuel L. Jackson's character to Sid. And then Sid kind of played dumb, like, Oh, I'll get you the money. And then tables just turn and he ends up murdering Samuel L. Jackson in his own house. Yeah. Right. I loved how that played out. <clears throat> and did you notice that there was a little, uh, like, like hint to uh samuel jackson's character knowing uh sydney's story because like when they first meet he says like oh i used to hang out with these people and the dude that like talks with that thing Mm -hmm. that was one of the friends that he said uh from atlanta that told him the story of like him killing john c Riley's dad yeah and so it's like that's like it, it almost kind of like it, it almost seems like did sydney's character understand the situation already at that first moment where he, it was like it was more of a distraction where he's like oh like i'm just gonna change the subject to yeah. like you saying pussy to this chick and everything and and all this stuff and so it's like yeah i was like i, I was like sitting there i was like man did he know like like he knows his history his background mm-hmm. like sydney's sydney but then he's like more. I guess he's trying to calculate like how much does he, does yeah. Samuel Jackson's character know? It was interesting, and uh, to 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 his like to Samuel Jackson's character. I wrote a note. I was like, man, this guy knows how to like deliver lines. Like you give him anything, and he like knows what type of like like emotion do you want behind mm-hmm. it? What type of like like character and stuff like I, I don't know like i feel like this guy like just knows exactly what character he's playing that and man's a chameleon like, yeah yeah it's like like i think a lot of people have like have notice of him from from like all the tarantino movies but yeah. you see like he plays like in marvel characters and stuff mm-hmm. and, and, and a whole variety of things but snakes on a plane Snakes on the plane. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that movie. Actually, <laughs> I've only seen clips. Oh, he's in Jurassic Park too. Yeah, yeah. The, is... the chain smoking dude that mm-hmm. gets like eaten at the end and everything. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, 
but like yeah he's he's he knows how to deliver his lines and stuff yeah. and the little moments that he's on screen for this movie he he knows how to like just live it for that moment and stuff and make it but, impactful too yeah yeah like, and it's knew. like you 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 don't understand like what his character is for mm-hmm. um because like uh, like the the movie doesn't really pick up until like what the last like 45 minutes yeah something like that like it, but like, it's the, the conflict doesn't appear until like the, towards the end of the movie yeah, yeah yeah but it seemed that's one of my dislikes is that it felt so abrupt like the whole situation in the hotel like it felt like things were playing now you get inter- introduced to different characters there's really no conflict yet and then it seems like boom here's the conflict they're in a hotel room, situation went down, Sid's called, and Sid has to fix this mess that they created. But there was no, like, transition to that. It was just like, boom, phone call. Hey, we need your help. Hey, I'm here. Hey, there's a guy that's knocked out on his bed that's bloody. It's like, how did how do you go from A to B? Yeah, and it's funny because I don't even consider that the conflict. Because mm. for me, the true conflict is Samuel Jackson and Sidney. Oh, because that's even later. Yeah, that's even later because it's like, <laughs> because that was almost like, like, because that is almost unrelated to what, to what Samuel Jackson's character is trying to do. True. Where it's like he's trying to now, um, like extort him for money because of the story that he knows and yeah. stuff, and whether or not that's true. And then the yeah, like the last little bit of like him like going to his house like taking all like one of his guns and stuff and waiting there Mm -hmm. to do that yeah it's like a lot of times the yeah it did seem like the build-up to everything was long and extended it showed too much or like i don't know i guess if this movie was longer this movie was only like a like an hour and 45 minutes i think or Mm -hmm. something or like i think this movie could have been longer i think that would have helped the story yeah, or the the beginning would be, or the beginning to be like condensed, where you have a true conflict kind of happening towards yeah. the middle of the story and stuff, and then you like have that kind of like unravel. Um, but but granted, it's Paul Thomas Anderson's first movie, and and so it's like I don't know what what else could you ask for him from him? Like, true. do we ask for perfection? That's the thing. There's no way. Yeah, there's no way. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I'm just wondering, because now it seems like producers and uh, companies have their hands in movies so much now that I don't think a movie like this would be made or they would have changed it in a way that they would have either lengthened the movie. So we had a three hour movie or they might have just cut out a bunch of the beginning which would have helped us uh but yeah i don't know if a movie like this would have been made or would be made now yeah i can see where like a production company may say like oh like we need more action or more yeah. more thrilling sequences and everything where like like I, for me one of the biggest like highlights of this movie is like like I like the shots where he's like they follow him walking through the casino yes. and stuff, and they show a lot of like he spends he's he's like a career gambler, so he spends his time eating breakfast in the morning, living in a hotel basically, and then he goes to the craps table. They show him in different points of his day mm-hmm. where he's like moving to different games throughout the throughout the day, and and there's like that one scene where like they show the the casino all the lights and everything there's reflections everywhere and they're just following him through weaving through uh people as they're like watching him walk to a table and stuff so stuff like that was actually enjoyable where it's like i really like that also yeah (laughs) that's that's in my likes um it reminded me i had a youtube deep dive of uh steven spielberg and they were talking about his there's so many different names for it but warner's so like a one take or a tracking shot, which is what that is. Um, and you don't even realize Spielberg does it, I guess, based on all the videos I was watching. Yeah. But I, I like the intent and the execution of 
the the wonders or tracking shots with Sid walking through the casino and yeah, I really enjoyed how they how they implemented it uh, throughout the film. And I, I feel like another shot is like the the beginning where like he meets John Cena. Oh, when he's outside, character. yeah. Well, inside, I feel like a diner is mm -hmm. like the perfect place to like frame a shot because like a booth like perfectly encapsulates two individuals having a conversation yeah and then you have the window behind them and then life kind of going on behind them so you can perfectly kind of have it where like like how paul thomas anderson does where it's like cutting to each face each as one. they're having the conversation mm -hmm. but then as it as it ends you kind of like cut to both of them sitting there yeah. and then leaving and then like he kind of like highlights whatever's on the on the table but the i i enjoyed this movie it, it's 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 interesting to watch this and and see where he moves on to mm -hmm. in in terms of his like act his uh, his directing and stuff where like i was like i was very pleased to like we did this where it's like like find directors and it's like all right they made this so-and-so movie and stuff where did they start off on and yeah and like and it's like where does this seed kind of start I, I think i've been using that that analogy too many times where it's like like it, it's you can see it where it's like here's what he knows he can put out and then you kind of like build on top of that mm -hmm. um and I, I i this is a question to myself or, or like i i kind of like said while i was watching the beginning where he's like teaching him how to like how to make money at the casino basically like he was like mm -hmm. doing that exchange of money and all that stuff yeah like, here's like it reminded me of yeah it reminded me of like a heist movie where like they're like doing something that will kind of like progress into like all right we're gonna steal a bunch of money he's like yeah. the little thing and I was like thinking to myself, I was like, it's like a heist movie, like the easiest kind of like debut movie to like, <laughs> like Michael Mann, but like his his heist movie, like Beef yeah. and all that stuff, where it's like, well, even is um, it easy? Reservoir Dogs is somewhat heisty. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's just a blotch heist. <laughs> yeah, very true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I I wonder, it's like, is it like, is that like a good way to open up your like your filmography, where it's like you know there's action there's like mm -hmm. dynamics between people and stuff and it's like there's drama maybe yeah. a little bit of comedy thrown in there yeah so it's a good like well-rounded genre of film mm -hmm. yeah but i was but, like watching this you assume it's going to be a heist film but then it too, doesn't yeah. turn into that like, especially how it how it started yeah like hey it's this like is how you're going this <laughs> Yeah, yeah. it's like a father son story <laughs> i think yeah father son like hey i want to help this <laughs> this dopey kid get out of yeah. the situation he's in in terms of like negatives you already said one where it's like uh the the dialogue kind of like like yeah but what else would you take from this as like i think the dialogue and then that whole transition from the whole transition to uh the hotel scene with mm -hmm. clementine's person that she was hooking up with or whatever the yeah old, the guy in the bed that seemed like it was too abrupt it and it really doesn't like... pan out to anything either no like they, they leave, leave for no reason too right? yeah or like they leave for a good reason but then like i think a day later they could have been like all right just come back Nothing yeah for like hey we're all good <laughs> yeah. no one's looking for this guy like <laughs> yeah there's some there's some scenes where i'm like confused where it's like and it, it, it's got to be Paul Thomas Anderson trying trying different things because mm -hmm. like there's a scene where like um Sydney's character is trying to get rid of the gun and the handcuffs into the the the, the drain mm -hmm. and when he like you assume he's gonna throw it like into the drain but then it like pauses it like goes into a slow motion shot of like the the gun kind of sliding off like slowly onto the concrete i was like what the hell what is that for <laughs> <you> <laughs> yeah so you can tell like i don't know i it, like there, there's no harm in like trying out a, a mm -hmm. shot like you know he's probably like all right i, I want to see what happens and stuff yeah but there was like no point of that i was like it's like you was <laughs> like you're like you're hoping that it's just gonna go straight in but yeah 
Because um, it didn't add to the story. It was just like, all right, no, cool. This was a cool no, one. We yeah. just try this and see if it works. Like, mm. I was also confused at first where uh, John C. Riley. I think it's because like we're kind of tainted with like what he's done recently. I like the comedic yeah. stuff. Yeah, but yeah. I was like, all right. Like I was kind of like debating in my head. I was like, I was like, is this like a good casting um, kind of like decision mm. or? Like this is probably early on in John C. Riley's career, but but when you get to like the whole dynamic that they're like almost like a father son father figure to to each other, and when it gets to that hotel scene, you understand. For me, I feel like he plays the character well, where he's he's like a kid yeah. that doesn't know what to do and is like reaching out to his dad and like, hey, can you help me figure this out? Mm-hmm. and that made that made it more, make more sense at first i was like man this seems kind of weird like um like they're dynamic. john c riley like i feel like someone else could have been like chosen over him but when it gets to the meat of the movie then i'm like okay i get it because didn't i don't know for sure but i think john c riley was in dramas before comedies right i think so i think he was like uh you you saw him more in like these type of movies yeah like it wasn't he a magnolia which is like that other paul thomas anderson film oh maybe yeah it kind of like confirms that he uses the same yeah, actors and stuff and actresses which i have not seen magnolia yet but me either that's the one with uh tom cruise right yeah <laughs> uh philip seymour hoffman no he's not in this no oh. this feels like it'd be fitting like just toss him in there in yeah. some role <laughs> sid is in it though hey it's... there you go yeah but everybody's in it. oh no he's in it oh he plays an officer yep <laughs> <laughs> but uh what'd you end up rating in this movie uh i didn't rate it on letterbox yet but i don't know i was torn like I think I would give it a two and a half or three. Okay. I was torn too. I gave I ended up giving it a four. Mm-hmm. But looking back on like what he's made afterwards, I was like, I, I don't like changing my rating like the moment like I, I give it the rating that kind of like comes in my head. Yeah. And I, I I log it. And I don't like changing it because then I feel like I'm like swayed by other people's ratings and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But I think I could give this a three and a half more so. I was like kind of like sitting in my head like three and a half. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I think that doesn't like say that like this is not, this is a, a terrible good movie. debut for, yeah. for him. And I think anybody could. Like if, if anybody direct, I, I don't know if it'll be any different with like a different director. Like, like directors are pretty good at knowing what movie they want to do, I guess. Yeah. But this i think is like a, a good understanding of like where paul thomas anderson kind of like goes on to mm-hmm. and he has like a, a a wide variety of movies if you think about it like he has like yeah. drunk love which is like a romantic film um there will be blood which there will is be blood, yeah. magnolia movie. inherent yeah, vice magnolia. is a comedy is it I, yeah like kind of so yeah that's like a wide variety of movies and it's like yeah. it's pretty cool yeah. I think it's a heist movie, sort of. Heist <laughs> <laughs> and he's a more subtle of like, like he has so many movies, but he's not, like you said, he's well known, but not, like, but forgettable to a certain extent. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. But, but still makes great films. Yeah, I know. I, I think so. It, with this, like, would you recommend it? And then would you, would you buy it for your movie collection? I wouldn't buy it. Um, and i may recommend it i don't know who exactly i would recommend it to but i think i would recommend it yeah that's true this is like an odd film to like like if you're like into watching movies then yeah like it's, then, it's yeah it's movie. easy yeah. yeah it's like like but if someone's like coming to you and said like i want to like watch a movie that's like i don't think this would be the first one that comes to mind no. uh honestly i didn't even know that he did this in the first place until we like started doing this like directorial debuts and debuts, stuff. Yeah. yeah so it's like it, it's it would be a recommendation now i guess now mm-hmm. that i know and i've seen it myself but again yeah like you said like buying a paul thomas anderson movie i would buy other movies other than this one yeah um, like 
this one is not going to be the first thing I buy from his collection or his filmography and stuff. So, so yeah, I find it hard to like buy it unless it's on sale again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, in terms of recommending it, yeah, it's like you have to find the right person. Like, are you like interested in this movie? Yeah. Are you gonna understand? Like, are you gonna want to like watch this movie? But I, again, it's it's not very long. It's it's uh it's pretty quick. I've seen I I actually watched the movie before this or like uh the the day before that was the same length, and mm-hmm. that one was like super long. It felt long. I was like this movie is like just like crazy and whatever and stuff. And so what was it? this movie? It's Vivarium or something. Um, I don't even know. It's what on that Netflix. Is. Okay. Um, Sounds I didn't like really I shouldn't enjoy watch it. Yeah. I didn't enjoy it myself, <laughs> but some people do and everything. Okay. But. Uh, but yeah, that that one is like the same length, and it was a slog for me. I was like, man, I was like, mm. kept like pausing it. I was like, oh my god, we only watched like forty minutes of this. <laughs> Ten, like come yeah. on, like, get me out of here. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, any uh, any last comments? Uh, I don't have anything. No. Uh, <laughs> Nothing. Did you have anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> all right kai you want to take us out yeah thanks for joining us for another episode of saturday night popcorn i'm kai and i'm jason and we'll be back next week for another one